हेलो गाइस लेट्स स्टार्ट टू डिस्कस अबाउट द डिजाइन ऑफ शाफ्ट एंड की फॉर आवर प्रोजेक्ट पर्सपेक्टिव दैट इज डिजाइन ऑफ गियर सो फर्स्टली लेट्स रेपर वन टिपिकल यूजेस ऑफ द कार्बन स्टील फॉर सिलेक्शन ऑफ द शाफ्ट मटेरियल एज यू कैन सी फॉर सी फोर्टीन इट इज द मटेरियल विच इज यूज टू मैन्युफैक्चर द शाफ्ट सो विल सिलेक्ट द सी फोर्टीन देन लेट्स फाइंड आउट द मटेरियल प्रॉपर्टी दैट इज एस यू टी एंड एस वाई टी that we have this chart from the chart we'll get for material c40 the value of tensile strength is taken from this you can select 660 640 or 680 and then l stress is from here that is 330 so here we have the ultimate tensile strength and l stress then we are considering that shaft is made from the forging process with best suitable manufacturing then using asme code shaft with keyway we know tau max that is maximum shear stress is equal to 0.75 into 0.30 syt or 0.75 into 0.80 sut we have this formula without keyway but here we are going to use a key so we are taking the formula with keyway so that we multiply this two terms by 0.75 okay so we already have the syt sut so let's put the value in this equation so we'll get tau max is equal to 85.5 newton per mm or tau max is equal to 86.4 newton per mm square but we are taking the value whichever is the minimum so this is the minimum value so let's select tau max maximum principal shear stress is equal to 85.5 newton per mm square then length of shaft to select or to find out the length of shaft we are going to use this diagram so in this so let's discuss about the length of intermediate shaft it will be easy to calculate then we'll apply the same length to input shaft and output shaft so first is distance of rotating part from the inner wall of housing so distance of rotating part rotating part is nothing but the gear so we'll get the distance from this chart that you already have this chart with you so here we have distance of rotating part from inner wall of housing and the distance can be taken 10 to 15 mm we are going to take 10 mm so here i write the distance L1 is equal to 10 mm. Okay. Then the second distance between adjacent rotating part. The distance between adjacent rotating part means one gear to another gear. And that distance we are going to take. Distance between adjacent rotating part. Here in the second row, distance between adjacent rotating part is C, 10 to 15. We can take any value 10 to 15. Here we are going to take adjacent rotating part. 10 mm the next is face width of the helical gear then face width of the spur gear here we have the space width of the helical gear space width of the spur gear we already done this calculation so we'll put that value face width of helical gear space width of spur gear then distance of bearing from the wall so again we are using this chart and here we have so first is distance of rotating part part from the inner wall of the housing here is the distance from rotating part of the inner wall of housing so it is 2l1 okay so 2 into 10 and second is distance between adjacent rotating part it is l2 so that can be written 10 mm here is distance between two adjacent part okay then third is face width of the helical gear here we write the face width of the helical gear v1 then face width of the spur gear here we write face width of the spur gear then distance between bearing wall from the sorry bearing from the wall so that is l3 so here 2 into l3 distance between the bearing from the wall and last is the assuming bearing width v is 30 so two bearing is used so here we have at opposite end 2 into 30 so just add all this figure we'll get length of shaft now considering the gear 1 that is the helical gear 
which is the left hand and rotated in clockwise direction or we are selecting the left hand helix we are just assuming that and it will be rotated in clockwise direction firstly find out the tangential force we can find out the tangential force by using of this formula that is 2 mt divided by dp okay we already know about this now how to calculate mt mt is nothing but a torque torque can be calculated by using of power 2 pi mt upon 60 t is nothing but torque that is mt power is already given in your statement so from that formula you can able to calculate the torque and use torque over here you can get tangential force okay so you will get this value then by using of tangential force we have the formula this formula is for the radial force and axial force of helical gear so put this formula in that formula phi n is nothing but the pressure angle and psi is nothing but the helix angle put the value uh, put the value of the phi n that is 20 degree psi we already assume this value 25 so put that value you will get pr similarly calculate pa so for shaft one helical gear is there and here we calculate all the forces pa pr also pt and, and maximum shear stress so here we have the free body diagram here is the helical gear the force pt pa axial force it rotated in clockwise direction radial force and these are the two bearings and then uh, here is the ar and here is the at okay so let's resolve these forces in vertical plane and in horizontal plane so first it is in vertical plane okay here we have the first resolve with vertical direction this is the bearing reaction let us consider it is in downward direction then pr is the force radial force it is in upward direction because here is a, another helical gear so radial force is act towards the center of the gear from the another gear it is act towards this and from this and for the next shaft it will be act to the next gear so here is the pr and due to pa there will be a couple act on the shaft so how we can calculate the value of this it is equal to c is equal to pa into r where r is the radius of helical gear so whatever the answer that answer is this value it is in clockwise direction then how to get this distance we already know the length of shaft so this is act at the center of the helical gear then the reaction of the bearing at the center of the bearing so we assume that bearing width is 30 so it is at 15 mm distance then in between bearing and gear there is a distance of 10 also the gear width is see here the face width of gear is 60 so here is the 10 plus it is uh, this force is at center of the gear so it is 30 so what we get so it will be that distance then let's calculate value of the all forces so taking moment about point O sorry about point A we'll get BR into the distance of the shaft that is 2 to 0 here plus upward is the positive plus PR into 65 then minus of this couple so we are considering that clockwise is minus and anti-clockwise is plus so here is the sign we already know the PR so we'll get the PR then assume AR plus PR is equal to PR when we put the sign of the PR is minus so we'll get the AR is equal to this term then the moment about point A and about point B is equal to 0 so let's find out the moment about point C it is equal to about point C BR into this distance that is minus 
br into 137 and this c so here we get minus br into 137 minus of the value of c so br is already negative so it is in plus sign so we'll get mc sorry mbc is equal to this value now let's result in the forces in horizontal plane so we have the horizontal forces on bearing that is AT and BT and then the only horizontal force on the gear is the tangential force so uh, taking moment about point A we'll get BT into the length minus of P2 into this distance is equal to 0 so we'll get the value of BT because we already know the PT again AT plus BT is equal to PT so we'll get the value of AT again MBA and MBB is equal to 0 so taking moment about point C it is equal to BT into this distance so we'll get bending moment about point C in vertical plane bending moment about point C in horizontal plane so equivalent bending moment is equal to under root of MBC square in vertical plane MBC square in a horizontal plane so we'll get the bending moment is equal to this value now we already know the MT that is the torque or torsional moment of the shaft so using ASME code we use the formula tau max is equal to that is principal shear stress is equal to 16 pi dq 